Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Vault Fox, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this shield out of EVA foam. The shield I'm making today is based off of some fan art by Jake Bartok, and I'll put it up here on the screen so you can see what I'm going for. It's basically a medieval rendition of Bo-Katan, and the shield that I'm going for is just a regular old circle. And to get the general shape, I'm just taking one of my Harbor Freight mats that I had left over from my Commander Shepard build earlier this year, and I'm just freehanding a circle onto the square shape. If you're not comfortable freehanding a circle shape, you could take a piece of string and attach it to a sharpie on one end and to a pencil on the other and kind of make a makeshift compass so that you can get a better circle shape. But I like to freehand things because I'm lazy. <laughs> Once I've got the circle shape refined to how I like it, I'm just taking my box cutter and going around the edge and cutting it free from its foam position. <laughs> Once that's all cut out, I'm taking a straight edge and just drawing some lines on the front of the shield. The shield in the fan art looks to be made of some type of wood, so what I'm going to be doing here is trying to make these look like wood panels on the front of the shield. As I was drawing in those lines, I noticed some parts of the circle were a little bit off, so I'm just going to be going in and cutting those off with my box cutter. Now I'm going in with a sharpie and just free handing some wood grain lines. I'm not really following any sort of reference, I'm just kind of going from what I remember wood to look like. If you want to make it look a little bit more realistic, you could definitely follow some you know, Google photos or things like that. But again, I just kind of was going from what I remember and I think it turned out pretty okay. got all the wood paneling and the grain lines onto my foam with Sharpie, I'm going back over those things with a soldering iron. I'm going over the really long straight lines first and I'm using a metal edge so that I make sure that they're as straight as I possibly can get them. And I find that this helped to do this because I was basically, you know, segmenting the whole shield so it didn't feel like I had a whole ton of wood grain to muscle through, even though I really did. <laughs> Burning in all of the wood grain detail was definitely the longest part of this build. I had about an hour and a half of raw footage from this, mostly because I had to take breaks to let that soldering iron cool down and then heat back up, as well as just getting up because my back hurt because I decided to do this on the floor hunched over and I'm 32 and I always forget that I'm not built as tough as I used to be and I need breaks. If you don't have a soldering iron or a wood burning tool, you could take a box cutter and just lightly cut over all of the wood grain lines and go over it with a heat gun. I actually use this method a little bit later on in the build, but it could lend itself well to this um, wood grain effect if you find yourself not having the tools that I'm using here. And here's how the shield's looking after all that soldering work is done. Before I go to the next step, I'm just taking my heat gun and going over all of that shield and just heat sealing everything in. Now I want to get to work on the edging of the shield and for that I'm using some 10 millimeter foam from TNT Cosplay Supply. I'm just cutting a 3 quarters inch width strip of foam out of this EVA foam and then I'm going to circle it around the edge of the shield. I attached the edging to the shield by using some contact cement. I find that this is the best adhesive to use in this case because it allows for the strip of foam to still be flexible and also not rip whenever you're trying to get around those curves. And as you can see here, I'm just cutting off the excess and then gluing that back together with some super glue. There's one last little bit of detail that I need to get around on the edging and it's these little triangle bits. So I'm just taking my little three quarter inch strip of foam that I had left over and just cutting out some triangles as you can see here. There's eight of these triangle bits in total on the reference image and I'm just going around and super gluing those in place. And as a finishing touch on top of those triangles, I'm taking some googly eyes and super gluing those on to act as some rivets. 
Pro tip though, if you don't want your googly eyes to actually have that little shaking noise whenever you're carrying your prop around, make sure that you cut out the backing of your googly eyes first so that the little googly eye in the middle doesn't flop around. Now that most of the little details are done on the front of the shield, I'm going in to make that dome piece that's in the middle of the shield and cutting out two large circles from a template of a bowl that I had in my kitchen. Once I've got those pieces cut out of EVA foam, I'm just taking my contact cement, smearing that over both sides of the pieces and letting those dry till they're tacky and smashing them together. Now I'm taking both my shield and the dome piece in the middle out to my garage and hitting those edges with a Dremel as well as my belt sander. Doing this to the edges is going to make the pieces look more organic and like they're actually not made out of just foam. I used to be really intimidated by the idea of using my belt sander to make some bevels, but I've actually grown to really like it and find it's a lot more consistent in giving me a nice dome shape or to bevel in edges of rounded shapes for me. Same kind of thing goes for my Dremel tool. I used to be really intimidated by this because one slip up and you really could just gouge the crap out of your foam. But don't get me wrong, I still do do that. But I find that whenever you take your Dremel and you go in short, light passes that are all going the same direction, you really alleviate the chances of you gouging the crap out of your film. Once I'm all done with my Dremel tool, I come inside and hit all of those edges with my heat gun just to seal the foam and get rid of all of those foam fuzzies that were kicked up by our Dremel. Now it's time to attach that circle piece to the middle of the shield. First, I want to take my heat gun and heat the entire foam piece up and form it around a snow globe that I have, or any kind of circular object will do. I just want to make it more of a dome shape than a just flat circle shape here. Once it's perfectly domey as I want it, I'm taking my Sharpie and just drawing out where I want the dome to sit on the shield and marking a spot where I just put down all my contact cement. And once all that contact cement is nice and tacky, I'm just taking that dome piece and putting it onto the middle of the shield. Before I get this shield ready for Plasti Dip, I'm taking some DAP Quick Seal and putting this over all the exposed seams that I have going on on the shield. And it's mostly where all of those little triangles were meeting the edging of the shield. This is basically going to help us fill in those seams so that it doesn't look as bad as I left it. <laughs> Oh, and another thing, I forgot to mention that at one point I was making my shield and realized it was too thin with one piece of EVA foam, so I ended up gluing another piece of that 10 millimeter thick Harbor Freight EVA foam to the back of it. Now what I'm doing here is adding some handles to the back of the shield so that I can hold it whenever I'm going to conventions, if those ever happen again. I'm just taking a scrap piece of EVA foam that I have laying around and cutting out about an inch thick strips so that I can super glue these to the back of the shield. I'm also heating them up with my heat gun so that they have a bit more of a curved look to them. And here's how the shield looks after about five to six hours of work and it's looking pretty dang good if I say so myself. The next step to getting this shield battle ready is to get some Plasti Dip on there and prime it up for some paint. I have a love-hate relationship with Plasti Dip because I swear sometimes I'll do everything that I can to make sure that it applies perfectly and it'll still bubble up on me, or I'll take every precaution in the book and it'll be fine. So it's like, it, it's almost like it knows my fears and things like that. But I definitely recommend if you're gonna use Plasti Dip to make sure to shake it up for at least one minute before you use it, or put the pan into a like pot of hot water and make sure that it's kind of, you know, gotten up to room temperature before you use it. I let that plastic dip dry for about two hours and then I'm going over the edging and the middle dome piece of the shield with some silver metallic spray paint. Once I let that silver dry for about an hour or so, I'm taping up the edging and the middle dome piece with some blue painter's tape and then spraying the entire shield white. I let that white base coat dry for about an hour as well and then I'm going back in with my blue painter's tape and I'm taping in all of the spots that are going to look like that Night Owl logo. So these exposed parts, I'm going to spray paint black. 
And once that black is dry, it's basically done. I am so happy with how this shield came out. You guys have no idea. As always guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and maybe subscribe. That'd be awesome. And I'll catch you guys next time, guys. See ya. Bye.